In this video, I'll show the more or less completed version of this uh, little, I call it a moon car. That's the working name I've been using. It's based on a uh, toy that was called the Astro Base. It had a, it had a uh, little car in it. I think they called those the Scout Car. But it had a, I believe, similar mechanism to this. It had one motor that would steer and propel the little car. I'm going to show, demonstrate it a little first. It's just being controlled by a switch box. It runs two wires to a motor and controls the direction of the motor and then picks wherever it's steering or driving it. The little astronaut man, it tells you which way he's going to go. That was a demonstration. Now I'm going to disassemble it to explain how it goes together. Uh, this little deck back here comes off. It has this, these little domes that are uh, just aesthetic. They just pop into the deck. You can put, you can glue magnets in here and here. I believe over six millimeter magnets that would secure this in if it's not secure enough. The wire goes to the motor, goes uh, under the deck. Up through a hole in here. Take the globe off. This is a uh, I think this is a 50 millimeter globe. No, no, 80 millimeter. Well, I'll we'll just measure it. Can't remember what it was. Forty mil. No, it says uh, yeah, it's an 80 millimeter globe. It's a Christmas tree ornament. Half of a Christmas tree ornament. They come in packages that look like this. This dome part is held on by this little threaded piece. There's a little nub in there that keys this to this shaft for the direction. The wire that goes through from the box comes up through here, gets soldered onto these paper clips. These are the paper clips I used. They're just clamped. This is called, I think you call it a commutator clamp or something. Commutator clamp or something like that. Two pieces of it. Short little two millimeter screws. Uh, the screws are like uh, eight millimeters, I think. Yeah, about eight millimeters. That would work. The, the uh, paper clips transfer the power through these little slip rings right here, which are made of brass tubing, like this, 8 millimeter brass tubing, that's cut into 4 millimeter sections. It has to be fairly accurately cut, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be reasonably accurate. And it goes through the slip rings. There are wires. Uh, this this wire, the other end of it, soldered onto the inside of the slip rings, and the wire is fed down through this hole that goes all the way, all the way down. Here's another. Uh, I'll disassemble this as the parts that it's made of. This, this comes in two parts that slide together. The wire goes down all the way through here at this hole. 
and comes out the soles right here. And then goes to a motor which fits in this pocket. I hope that's clear, but this is two parts. You probably have to do some sanding and uh, working on this. My printer wasn't doing too good right now, so uh didn't come out perfect. A little bit of sanding, oh, and that'll pop in there, and you can super glue it in. And then that will we'll fit up through this uh, ring gear, I think I called it. I'm going to go ahead and assemble. Well, first of all, let's take a close look at this working. That's a forward direction for the motor where it drives the, uh, the main wheel. When it goes in reverse, a little idler gear is propelled up into this other gear, which is right here. And this, this uh, spur gear drives the larger inner... Uh, inside gear a little spring here keeps tension between this idler part so that it will whichever direction the uh, whichever direction the motor tries to turn it will move that idler with it hopefully that shows up good I'll, I'll disassemble this now so a little more detailed view of it. To assemble it, you just do this in the reverse order. This nut comes off. It's an M6 nut. You should probably run a tap through all this stuff and even a die over the, the other threads if you have it. I have an M6 tap and die that I used to clean up threads. Now, to get this off, we'll probably just... There's a little uh, nut right here that threads down here. That threads onto this larger threaded part. Now, this is all very fragile. As you can see, I just broke it. That's all right. I've got another one. I'm just doing this to show people how to assemble this. You want to be careful when you do it, though. As you thread this out, pull down on the whole drive assembly so that it will come out. One of, one of the reasons I was reluctant to finish this project is because it's kind of a difficult thing to build. So this goes on here. And this nut goes on here. You can see the slip rings. They have a small wire soldered to the inside and then fed down all the way through and come out this hole. In between the slip rings is a small spacer that keeps them electrically isolated so when you put your wire in there make sure you don't have bare wire that bridges across the two here are the other parts that we need to look at this uh, I believe it's called a bevel spur gear is just held on by a uh, got it written down over here 16 millimeter long M3 screw. It barely starts into this threaded part here, but that's important. You don't want too long of a one, and I'll explain why in just a minute.
this has to run freely on this screw. It's like it's axle. Now we have the other part. There is a brass, a piece of uh, eighth inch brass rod, three millimeter would also work, I believe, that runs through this gear, through here, and into this gear. A brass shaft has to be attached tightly to both gears so they spin together because that's what's going to transfer the motion between here up to through here to the uh, through this gear and into the, the large ring gear. So that, that, that brass shaft has to be attached securely to these two gears, but it has to run freely in this frame part. So you'll probably have to drill this a hole in here out. You can see it here. It goes through here. It has to spin freely. And after you get it together, you'll have to uh, press the two. I had another gear somewhere. You'll have to press the two together so that uh, they mate, but don't press them so far together that they squeeze the frame and won't ro rotate freely. They have to rotate freely. On with the rest of it. This part here is uh, the idler assembly, I guess you would call it. This little arm. One of the things about assembling it is when you put the motor in, you'll need to put this assembly together first and then slide the motor in onto this shaft, which has a keyed part. I'll take this apart. First, there's a little spring. I got it out of a spring kit. And then this, this is another M6 nut. You can pull this off here after you assemble it. But this won't come off uh, without pulling this motor back some. So you'll have to keep that in mind when you assemble it. Put the motor in a little ways and then feed this onto a motor. And then uh, get the motor in its final position and put some hot glue on it. But this uh, idler arm, well, that's a new one. This idler arm has to spin freely on the this part, the gear, the threaded rod that runs comes from the motor. There is another gear on here that is uh, held on with a three millimeter screw approximate length would be 12 millimeters it's probably a little longer one I've got in there but a 12 millimeter would work it needs to spin freely too you can see the way that works now I hope Well, I'll just leave that disassembled. We're going to go on to the last part of it, which is this uh, little wheel here. It has the gears in it, or the gear in the middle of it. These are just rubber O-rings that I got out of a Harbor Freight O-ring kit, which has many different sizes. And you just pick the one that uh, fits best. The shaft, or the, the screw going through here, needs to be... About 28 millimeters long, a 30 millimeter would work. It doesn't matter if it runs a little over. 
make sure this wheel turns freely too to do that you and to get it to go together right you'll probably want to drill out this side where the screw goes in with a three millimeter or eighth inch drill and just let it thread into the other side the other parts about assembling it after you feed those wires down through here then you solder them onto the motor doesn't matter the order you can sort out the uh, polarity at the switch box I believe that's uh, all you'll need. Well, one other thing. These two parts. This part and this part are super glued together. After you get them uh, to fit nicely. Make sure you have a good, nice fit. This has to be fairly uh, smooth up here because it's going to rotate right here. The commutator wire or paper clips are held on with this clamp, these two pieces of this clamp. And they're held on with uh, two more two millimeter plastic screws that go through the bottom. It's important that these screws go down below this surface because that's where the top of uh, this is going to spin. has to spin freely. This one's a little tight. You'll just have to work on uh, work on it with sandpaper or whatever to make it fit uh, freely. The other, the other part, this screw here needs to be like this button head screw because there is a groove here where it will run around and, and, not, and not rub on the uh, surface here. The two parts are held together by three millimeter by I think eight millimeter plastic screws. They're pretty short. I'm, yeah, I believe eight millimeter is the length I used. The wheels are just held on with a little threaded. Uh, well, I'm not going to take them apart, but these are just little threaded stubs that go in. Make sure the wheels spin freely. Two more O-rings from the Harbor Freight O-ring kit. The globe, after it's all assembled, can be held on with a three millimeter, the same screw as you use right here, I believe. I haven't done that yet, but it should fit. It's a it's a hard thing to build because of like these. These commutators that have to be soldered on and cut from uh, the 8 millimeter brass. These 3D printed parts are fragile, as you can see there. I broke it just trying to take it apart. That's all right. I can fix it. Uh, a motor, I believe, I can't remember the speed of a motor I used. It's either 60 or 100 RPM. 100 RPM would, well, 60 would certainly work. It just might be a little slow. Other things about building it, you just want to make sure you get all the, the, your elephant foot from the build plate taken care of. Even though I have some there, it doesn't seem to be bothering anything. Well, I'm going to post the files on Thingiverse and Printables. So if anybody wants to build it, uh, that's where it will be. Thanks for watching.